Hello and welcome to Legal Briefs, Cryptocurrency Edition and everything else cool. I am Attorney Jeremy Hogan, your humble guide today to the dangers that lurk in your cryptocurrency from the local friendly United States Security Exchange Commission and we will be analyzing Cardano, Doge, XRP, that's an easy one, Polkadot and finally Uniswap in part dos of the Crypto Legal Briefs danger ratings. In putting this together for you, I realized that the test in the US for whether something is a security is so outdated and difficult to apply to assets like cryptocurrencies that sometimes I think it's done intentionally that way just to guarantee lawyers full employment, especially securities lawyers. Now that's what some of the conspiracy types might think, but I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Come here, closer, closer. Sometimes conspiracies are true. Watch this. The Frozen Tarzan Connection When Frozen co-directors Jennifer Lee and Chris Buck took to Reddit for an Ask Us Anything, they blew everyone's minds when they revealed that, despite the film's opening montage, Anna and Elsa's parents didn't actually die at sea. Instead, Buck stated the protagonist's parents got washed up on a shore in a jungle island. The queen gave birth to a baby boy. So, in my little head, Anna and Elsa's brother is Tarzan. Tarzan is actually Elsa's brother? Mind blown. Welcome back and let's get into this law stuff right away and take a look at Cardano, Doge, XRP, Polkadot, and Uniswap. First, our legal disclaimer, see below. It basically says, don't take me serious, which I certainly don't do myself. In the United States of America, we use a legal test developed back in the 1930s for whether something is sold as a security and therefore is subject to regulation by the government. Cryptocurrencies and the people and companies that issue them generally think that cryptocurrencies they issue are not securities and therefore they do not have to jump through the very expensive and time-consuming hoops that the government requires of securities issuers. In your mind, a security is an issuance of stock. One share of Apple stock, for example, gives you ownership of a piece of the company. Because that stock is a security, Apple has to disclose everything about the company and those disclosures and such all go through the SEC. Apple has to tell stockholders everything about the company, income, expenses, profits, everything like that, except maybe it's foreign child labor practices. But in any case, a stock is a security, but here in the States, the definition has been stretched much broader than that. The case law says that a security is anything that is sold or transferred for value in which the purchaser is relying on the seller to increase the value of the thing purchased. The legal jargon for the test is whether, quote, there is an investment of money in a common enterprise with a reasonable expectation of profits to be derived from the efforts of others." Close quote. Originally, the profits had to be solely derived from the efforts of others, but that requirement has since been eroded away. Also, the SEC has been successful in arguing that simple marketing a cryptocurrency in a certain way can be evidence that there was a common enterprise for profit between the buyer and the seller. So, we see that the definition has even been stretched further out over the last 80 years or so. Full employment for securities lawyers. So, I've done my research and let's start with Cardano and give it a legal briefs danger rating. Cardano is a very interesting legal analysis. Cardano is basically an alternative to Ethereum and its digital token is the Ada coin, I think it's called Ada, and it's named after Ada Lovelace, the 19th century mathematician who was the first person to propose an algorithm to be carried out by a machine. In other words, she was the first computer programmer, the original nerd. Also, did you know she was the only child of Lord Byron, one of my favorite romantic poets and author of my personal favorite long-form poem, Don Juan. I love it when two things I'm interested in collide like that. The ADA token was initially released as an ICO, a sale to raise money to build the ledger and such, and that is always problematic as far as the SEC is concerned. In fact, the general thought at the SEC is that almost all ICOs are sales of securities. However, Cardona did something that was legally very smart its initial coin offering took place in my old stomping grounds of Japan, which, as you may have heard, is very legal friendly to crypto. About 95% of the ICO was to Japanese nationals, and from there, sales went into exchanges for sales to Americans. Very smart Cardano law team. Because the SEC's long arm does not stretch all the way across the Pacific, they cannot touch those sales. Now, whether Cardano could have a problem with Japanese regulators, I will leave to my friend Crypto Eddie to look into. So that's it. End of analysis? Not quite. Because if you are an SEC lawyer looking to guarantee your future employment, you might think an ADA token was sold 
to a Japanese investor in an ICO and that security made its way onto an exchange where the exchange then sold it to an American. And the SEC regulates that exchange. So I am going to sue the exchange for the sale of an unregistered security. Far-fetched? Perhaps, but also consistent with some statements from Chairman Gensler that the SEC would focus on exchanges and such this year. So because of that, we will say that there is some danger because as soon as the SEC sues exchange number one, the other, the other exchanges will also delist. But it's never been done before, so the danger is somewhat remote. For that reason, we give the ADA token a legal brief danger rating of 2.5 out of 10. It's theoretically possible, but nothing like this legal argument has ever been made before. So with all that is going on in the securities markets, I would not expect anything to happen. Rest at ease and rest in peace, Ada Lovelace. Okay, so that was a big one. So let's move on now to the infamous Dogecoin. That is one pretty dog. So Dogecoin was begun by two software engineers in 2013 as a kind of joke. And in that vein, the manner in arriving at my conclusion for the Dogecoin was more interesting than my conclusions because I could not find much of anything in regard to how Doge was originally distributed. So I turned to Twitter for help, always apparently a mistake, and it led to this. Stuart Lord told me that two guys saw a nickel with dog poop on it and thus the first Doge was born. Thank you, sir, for your input. And the Don chimed in, quote, Elon Muck made a poopy and there it was, close quote. That's my favorite. And finally, my friend Free Willy stuck with the dog theme, quote, I think it was sold over the counter at the pet store. And that was the cleanest response. Apparently there is not much love in the XRP community for the Doge. But fellow Twitter newbie Wesley Dunow came to the rescue and got me the correct answer. Wesley kind of looks like a genius disguised as a lumberjack. Very nice. He pointed me to an article which states that within one week of Dogecoin's creation, 6.58 billion of them had already been mined and 95% of all Dogecoin was mined within the first year. So there was no ICO, no sale, a decentralized ledger and loose knit committee of funny, strange people is all that exists. So going back to our legal analysis, I think the SEC would only be made more of a joke if it sued a joke coin. So I see no problems on the horizon here. But really, who would you sue? Elon Musk for market manipulation? If that happens, I officially offer to rep him pro bono. Call me Elon. But that's not going to happen. And even if it did, it wouldn't affect the price directly. So. Dogecoin gets a 10 out of 10 for being cool and quirky and a 2 out of 10 on the legal briefs danger rating. Put that decentralized collar on and the Dogecoin is tick free forever. And next on our list, I kid you not, is XRP. The legal brief the SEC danger rating for XRP is officially Now that's the danger rating, but I hope it ends like this. except not as long an ending as Lord of the Rings and without 15 minutes of hobbits jumping down on a bed. Very uncomfortable. Next up, my personal favorite, Polkadot. Not because of the technology, because I kind of like the name. It's very cute. Polkadot is a recent platform which is designed to connect other blockchains together in a single network all strung together in parallel, kind of like your Christmas tree lights. And if you want to turn on the lights, you will need the DOT coin. I think it's the DOT coin, which is currently sold on major exchanges. But is it possibly in the SEC hot zone? Let's start with the bad news. The Web3 Foundation, which designed and set up the Polkadot platform, had a number of ICOs starting in 2017 and has apparently raised almost $200 million to date. And to make matters worse, the ICOs took place before the Polkadot platform was fully functional. Not good. This is bad because sales of the DOT coin look more like an investment contract where buyers are relying on the efforts of others the developers to increase the value of the token because when the tokens are sold before there even exists a platform to use them on the inherent value of the token is pretty much zero nothing so of course you are relying on the developers to make the platform so that the coin has some value not good for polka dot to make matters worse here was what happened to the initial tokens 50 percent to investors 8.4 percent to private sale investors likely exchanges, 11.6% were kept by the Web3 Foundation for fun future fundraising and 30% were allocated to Web3 to develop and build the infrastructure. Now that's all bad. 
But here's the good part. First, the Web3 Foundation is a nonprofit corporation, and even better, it is organized outside of the United States in the beautiful country of Switzerland, homeland of Albert Einstein, and outside of the jurisdiction of the SEC. In addition, the ICO sales were not made available to Chinese and Americans due to the exact regulatory concerns we are talking about in this video. Now, all of that is good and smartly done. Good job, Polkadot Legal Team. However, the SEC is the Securities and Exchange Commission. So, the danger remains that the SEC could attack the exchanges if it concludes that DOT was sold in the character of a security. And certainly, if a US company had sold it like the DOT ICO did, it was definitely in the danger zone as far as the SEC. And we cannot sweep this danger under the rug as SEC Chair Gensler recently set his sights on exchanges and trading companies. So, Polkadot and its coin land squarely in the middle of the legal brief's danger rating, and that is a 5 out of 10. If the SEC has a couple more beers at the bar, Miss Polkadot is going to start looking very attractive. Until then, you are fine. Which takes us to our final coin to analyze, Uniswap which I didn't really know much about until today. I kept thinking it was called BuySwap for some reason. Maybe that's a website, I don't know. My understanding of Uniswap is that it allows individuals to trade any Ethereum-based coins without an exchange getting involved, so it's peer-to-peer. -peer. How exactly, I don't understand, but I found a great video explaining it. Basic liquidity pools, such as those used by Uniswap, use a constant product market maker algorithm. Okay, actually, he lost me at algorithm. In any case, what's interesting about Uniswap, developed by Uniswap Labs, from a legal standpoint, is that last year, the network began trying to decentralize itself by distributing tokens through an airdrop. So, last year, if you had even said the word Uniswap, maybe in your sleep, you were given 400 Uni tokens. Meanwhile, Uniswap's lab staff and such received about 40% of the Uni supply, which would be released over a period of four years, kind of similar to Ripple's escrow. It's an interesting approach to releasing tokens because under current securities laws, there is a relatively strong argument that the airdrop was the transfer of a security. The analysis is somewhat convoluted, but don't take my word for it. Attorney Stephen Paley, Paley up in the DC law firm of Anderson Kill, which is a great name for a law firm, said back in 2020 that uni was almost certainly a security. But that's just the beginning. That's where things get really interesting because the airdrops are of course free. The tokens are basically given away. So Uniswap Labs didn't even have an ICO. There was no profit made from the airdrop. So the nuts and bolts of it is, if the SEC sue Uniswap Labs and win, what's the result? There are no profits to disgorge from Uniswap. So what incentive does the SEC have to file the lawsuit? Is it the principle of the matter? I don't think so. Which leads us to our conclusion that although Uniswap might be open to enforcement from other regulatory bodies, the chance of an SEC lawsuit with no tangible result to show from it seems rather remote. So Uniswap will get a 4 out of 10 on the legal briefs danger rating. And that is where the current state of US securities laws leaves us. As attorney Polly states in a written plea to the SEC, quote, we have an obligation as lawyers to steer our clients in the right direction We'll continue to do that, but if anyone from the SEC is listening, we could use a little help." Close quote. Well put, Mr. Polly. Remember out there, if you are honestly trying your best and just don't get it, it never hurts to ask for a little help. Thanks for watching.